Yeah, so I'm from, uh, I was, my parents are Jamaican, but I was born and raised in the, um, in Texas, specifically the Austin area. Uh, grew up listening to a lot of reggae and hip hop. In hip hop, you have subcultures, just like any other, you know, rock. It's not all just rock, right? You have hardcore and you have other versions of it. So in hip hop, you have these different subcultures. I think it's called heavy metal, huh? or, yeah. or is it like death metal? There's death hardcore, metal, heavy metal. I think you're, you're thinking back to our previous topic there. Uh, I, <laughs> there is a hardcore like a punk like like uh whatever Jocko willink got me into that type of music but back to the lecture at hand with hip-hop here in the south there was a there was a big movement out of houston houston had a huge like they were the mecca for texas hip-hop and in texas hip-hop you don't need to be a hip-hop fan to get what i'm saying i'm just kind of laying the context for you this is going somewhere. Um, but out of Texas, there's these, there's a UGK. You ever heard that song? Big pimp and spend and cheese. Oh yeah. Yeah. For Jay, sure. UGK. They're out of Houston. They're with JC, but they're one of the big ones out of Houston. There's some other songs like going to catch me running dirty. That's another big guy. Uh, that was a huge, I, huge, huge. Man. Yeah. And so th- it, it, but it started in this subculture with screw music and all this and all that. It started in Houston. So here's this guy out of Houston, Jim Mc McInville, or I don't know, I don't know how to say his name. Um, he's better known as Mattress Mac. He's got he's been selling mattresses in the Houston area forever. If you live in Houston, you've heard of him. I don't. Um, but Mattress Mac has made a bunch of money pushing mattresses over a long time. And Mattress Mac recently, Mattress Mac looks like he's about 75, 76 years old maybe older 80 he's looking more like you know like jim uh jerry jones like they look around Mm -hmm. the same age older and mattress mac dropped a commercial here recently that went nuts it just went viral and mattress mac is clearly speaking to a certain demographic in this video i am going to play a clip for you guys listening and um show a clip for all two of you that are watching give me one sec here share figure it out there we go now before i even go to for you listening this guy matches matt like i said he looks like jerry jones he's wearing a big purple puffy jacket almost like something that puff daddy would have wore back in the 90s like a big puffy purple jacket he's got he's bald and he's got a purple bandana tied in a tupac fashion but this purple stuff, this cup that he's holding that you guys can see, the Sprite, the Jolly Ranchers, all this is speaking to the demographic. They, If you're in this subculture, you already know what this means. Let me play a little bit of what Mattress Mac is talking about right here. Did you get chopped and screwed by a competitor who said they were going to hook it up, then went ghost when it was time for your delivery? Here at Gallery Furniture, you know, we stay knocking on doors like MC and Little Kiki. And you know when you cop from gallery furniture in four hours or less, our delivery team is going to show up and show out because we don't do it for the clout. This is what gallery furniture and we are all about. All right. <laughs> so, wow. To, to the demographic that he is not targeting here, this guy looks absolutely ridiculous. And he is he's talking about stuff that somebody, again, if you're not in this demographic, you're like what the hell is he talking about? Knocking doors down and and Pimp C and yeah, cop little, something. You cop don't know something. if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, he's just, if you're not if you're not again if you're not in the subculture, like what the hell is going on and who is this clown? If you are in this subculture and you grew up listening to this music and get up, it, it what you want to do in marketing is you want to stop. You want you want, some, you want somebody to stop. Earlier, Dimitri was talking about scrolling and this and, and mindlessly scrolling. And our job as marketers is to stop you from scrolling, shake you out of that daze and get you to focus on what's happening. So if you're his target demographic, you see him in his purple, this, this old white dude in this puffy purple jacket drinking what it's called lean or sipping on some scissor. It's like it's, it's a drink that this subculture would drink to, to kind of get messed up. And they would put Jolly Ranchers and Sprite in it. So you see this, you see that, and you're like, what the? If it was a black dude who looked like me doing this, you keep scrolling because that's, that's fitting. But now that you see Jerry Jones 
sipping on syrup. You're like, what the? So you stop. And then he has the music playing in the background. And then he just starts dropping all these keywords and all these references. And in your mind, you're like, I couldn't stop watching it, Dimitri. I knew what he was doing. Uh, I listened to the whole damn commercial. And by the time the commercial was done, I wanted to drive to Houston and buy 12 of these damn mattresses. <laughs> it was the best damn commercial ever for me. But if you watch it, Dimitri, I mean, you watch it. I sent it to you. What did you think? I mean, that that's incredible that you would want to go drive there and buy mattresses <laughs> because I saw it. It was shocking and hilarious, but I, I don't think I'd buy a mattress from it. Like, I would kind of be thinking, is this a joke? Now I've heard of this guy before, so that kind of I, I knew he it was a commercial as far real business, but just based on this one commercial alone, I, I had no idea what he was talking about. It was fun, and he was it was a cool performance, but I wouldn't buy a mattress from him. Yes, and I think that kind of goes to the point where he it was talking to me and that and it's not just me it isn't it's not even just it's probably it's going to be a bunch of black folks for sure but it wasn't just black folks who were within this subculture you have hispanics and you have whites as well um but if you're within that subculture you're just intrigued and he it could go wrong fast it could even be considered offensive especially in nowadays but this man or his team did their research and they just knocked it out of the park at one point he's like and if your credit is fucked up, we can blah, blah, blah. Like, let's be real, bro. There's a certain part of this demographic that's going to have some messed up credit, right? Like, he just, he was, I mean, he knew it. His team knew it. And it went viral for a reason. And then I sent it to some of my friends. And my friends were like, yo, I'll buy a mattress. And really? My friends who knew, my friend, uh, my, one of my, my business partner who, you know, he's into hip hop culture, brilliant marketer. He's like, yo, his ROAS, return on ad spend. It's going to be astronomical. Um, I thought this was a brilliant example of, of, of stopping you, shaking you, waking you up, getting you to pay attention, and then knowing your demographic. I thought it was brilliant. I think the, one of the things we need to talk about is why did it land and why didn't it turn into a PR nightmare for him? Because he is an old white guy and he does look like Jerry Jones. And he kind of reminds me of Jerry Jones in many ways. He seems like he's on the ball. He's very active. He's wants to be in on things. He's the actual one doing the, the, the filming. And so he it, great on him, but how could, why did it land and why didn't it turn into a PR nightmare? I one of the reasons I believe it landed because this commercial I didn't play it all for you guys. I'm not gonna bore you guys with it because I'm sure most of the listeners, again, all two of them, are not going to be within this this hip hop subculture. But I believe it landed because his team really did their research. It's just I want to say every other sentence he's dropping something that makes you say, "Oh, like you're talking to me." Oh. You know that rap artist, you know that line, you know you know this new language. I guess it was called Ebonics back in the day. I'm not sure what it's called today, but he's using, if it's Ebonics, that's what he's using over and over. And it's funny, it's just funny to hear him say it and say those phrases and then, then talk about those artists and those songs. And for, this is probably a two to three minute commercial and boom, 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 just nailing all of it. So I had to do a little bit of research on this guy. I've seen him before because he's known for he's he's known in the entire country by for placing huge Super Bowl bets and World Series bets, especially when Houston is in the team. I think he had a massive bet on the Houston baseball team when they were in the World Series. And I don't even know if he won or lost. It kind of doesn't matter. It seems like that's a big marketing play for him and it works. I was looking up their revenues. They started uh decades and decades ago now he is an older guy so he's been around and i think as late as 20 so he had a huge year in 2014 and then it was kind of down they were doing 150 million dollars a year now i think they're back to i mean different sources but doing over 100 million dollars in a single location furniture store i actually don't know if that's a lot or not i probably is a lot for single location furniture store, quite frankly. So he's really doing something right. It's just Houston. He's not even ex ex expanding to any other parts of the country. He's also really renowned in Houston for helping during the big 
hurricane that came through a few years ago. He opened up his store. He provided food for hundreds of people. So he's well, well, well known and respected, well liked in Houston. And this commercial is only running in Houston. So I'm thinking, is that why he got away with it? Because he's already built up the goodwill. Because even after you're saying that it worked for you and you're, you're not in Houston, but you know the subculture, you send it to some of your friends. Me watching, I'm like, dang, you're like, this has got to be a PR nightmare. But I guess he built up the credibility in his hometown. And so it's okay that maybe he doesn't even really know this music. I mean, it's hard to believe that that he knows Chameleon Air and whatever. And maybe he does, but maybe it's okay. The script is good enough and his performance is good enough where it's just, hey, I get what you're doing. It's fun. And I'll still buy a mattress from you. I think that could be it. And I also think that if he did not do the research he did and and if he did, if they didn't if they didn't do their homework the way they did their homework, I don't think it lands as well. And I don't think that all that PR and goodwill would matter. Uh I'm sure like the guy from what's his name? The Papa John's guy, um, the leader, he had to step down because he dropped an N bomb during a role play. Or something like that a long time ago. I'm not sure if you mm. ever heard about that, but I'm sure if we looked at him. Oh, well, go ahead, Dimitri. Well, I remember hearing about it. I don't remember exactly why he had to step down. I just remember he was stepping down. It was P- Papa John's was huge. I mean, you, you have your Pizza Hut, your Domino's, your Papa John's. Domino's have been kind of a leader recently. I don't know if that that's because Papa John's fell off, but they used to sponsor everything, and he'd be in commercials with Peyton Manning, and yes. now he's gone. He was the face of it. He was all the marketing. I'm sure he's probably done a bunch of great stuff with all his stores and giving to charity and this and that. Probably a big deal within his community. But you go and you have one teleconference where I believe that he was doing a role play, like an HR role play, and he said the end bomb and it was over. And it wasn't even like he was really trying to like he wasn't he was role playing, right? And it just went wrong. It went wrong fast. Um if if oh buddy right here, if Mattress Max is dropping end bombs, I'm not sure if it goes so well, right? Hell, I don't even know. He did it so damn good. I, don't, I, I, I just, I believe that to your point, it's in the Houston area, and yeah. he just he hit on Houston hip hop so well. He didn't do one or two things or say like it's very evident. Everything from the get go, again, from what he's wearing to what he's drinking in here, and s- sentence after sentence, he put so much homework in, or his team put so much homework in that it was entertaining. It took you out of, because I'm, you know, again, I'm scrolling and all of a sudden I see Mattress Mac and that's all that's happening in my world at that moment is what the hell is happening in this reel and I'm watching it. And so he stopped people, took them out of their world and then he hit on the hip hop. And you knew that if this, if you grew up in Houston and, or if you listened to Houston hip hop and you were really into it, it's almost nostalgic. Some of the stuff that he's saying, you're just entranced. And I think that the work behind it is what went is why it landed. If he half-assed it, dropped an end bomb, who cares about his charity and all the goodwill he's done in Houston? It could it would turn against you just as fast, in my opinion. Well, good for him because this was definitely a risk. I'm looking here on the YouTube mattress mat commercials. It looks like he's been doing commercials for 40 years. Dang. And he's he's very well known for wearing a mattress in his commercials. And he's just been he's been a star for a long time. And this was a risk. He took a risk legitimately. So uh, kudos to him. Uh, I don't know how many people would have taken that risk necessarily, because what's the upside? I really wonder what the upside of this ad is. Your friend is saying it's going to have a huge ROAS. Is it going to take their sales from? Let's say it's at 100 M and is it going to go to 150 million in that case, probably worth the risk. Is it going to move the needle just a little bit? I don't know. I, I guess let's, let's keep following this along and see what revenues they're going to get out of this. I would be shocked if it didn't, you know, if you're in the Houston area and he's clearly talking to a, a, a demographic here, clearly. And if you're in the Houston area and you're this demographic and it's and you're around your neighborhood and you see, mattress firm you need a mattress and you see mattress firm or you see whatever his the name of his business was he says it here i forgot gallery you see furniture ma- yeah you see mattress firm or you see gallery furniture i'm gonna i'm if i know that gallery furniture was mattress mac and i saw this commercial mattress mattress firm doesn't stand a chance 
nobody stands a chance if it's me buying the mattress, seeing this commercial and his his stores in my neighborhood. 